What purpose the gentleman from Florida rise? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the resolution HRES 668, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Texas Western's 1966 NCAA basketball championship and recognizing the groundbreaking impact of the title game victory on diversity in sports and civil rights in America as amended. The clerk will report the title of the resolution. House Resolution 668, resolution celebrating the 40th anniversary of Texas Western's 1966 NCAA basketball championship and recognizing the groundbreaking impact of the title game victory on diversity in sports and civil rights in America. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Keller, and the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Hinojosa, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks on HRES 668. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I yield myself as much time as I may consume. It gives me great pleasure to rise in support of House Resolution 668, which celebrates the 40th anniversary of Texas Western's 1966 NCAA Basketball Championship and recognizes the groundbreaking impact of the title game victory on diversity in sports and civil rights in America. Texas Western's victory occurred 40 years ago, 1966, during the midst of the civil rights movement to end discrimination against blacks. The 1954 Brown versus Board of Education decision and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 outlawed institutional racial segregation. In Vietnam, blacks were fighting and dying alongside their fellow white soldiers. Blacks weren't, however, playing basketball at many schools in the South where de facto segregation still reigned. For Don Haskins, coach of the Texas Western Miners men's basketball team, a person's race didn't matter. To him, ability on the basketball court mattered more than the color of the player's skin. To Coach Haskins, the only thing that really mattered was winning. This was the philosophy Coach Haskins used on the night of March 19, 1966. That night, the Texas Western Miners made history by defeating the number one ranked all-white University of Kentucky Wildcats for the NCAA Basketball Championship. A game of historical significance because no other college team at that time had ever started five black players in a major championship contest. In fact, when Texas Western defeated Kentucky 72 to 65, a game still celebrated as one of the biggest college basketball upsets in NCAA history, there were no black basketball players in the Southeastern or Atlantic Coast conferences. This remarkable triumph helped shift the national perception of black athletes and bring about the widespread desegregation of college sports. In turn, the desegregation of college sports helped to spread greater equality throughout American society. Mr. Speaker, the man behind Texas Western's success is Don Haskins. His 38-year reign at Texas Western, now the University of Texas El Paso, allowed him to become one of the winningest coaches in NCAA history. He amassed a 719 and 354 record, 32 winning seasons, seven Western Athletic Conference championships, four Western Athletic Conference tournament titles, and 21 postseason appearances. In 1997, Coach Haskins was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. He retired from coaching in 1999. Coach Don Haskins is truly a living legend in college sports. He believed that as a coach, he should recruit the best raw talent he could find, no matter the player's race, background, or life story. If not for the colorblind dream of Coach Haskins to simply win basketball games with his team's most talented players, history may not have been made on the night of March 19, 1966. I want to thank my colleague from Texas, Mr. Reyes, for introducing this resolution and bringing forth a lesser known yet significant piece of history in college athletics. I am happy to join with my colleagues in celebrating the 40th anniversary of Texas Western's 1966 NCAA Basketball Championship. I ask my colleagues to support this resolution and I reserve the balance of my time. Jill from Texas. I yield myself such time as I may consume. 
It is my privilege to rise in support of H.R. 668, a resolution to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Texas Western's 1966 NCAA Basketball Championship. I am proud to join my colleague and very good friend, the resolution's author, Congressman Silvestre Reyes from El Paso, in commemorating the 40th anniversary of this watershed event in our struggle for racial equality. On March the 9th, 1966, Texas Western College's coach Don Haskins led an all-black starting lineup to a 72-65 win over an all-white team from the basketball powerhouse University of Kentucky. For Coach Haskins, he was simply putting his best players on the floor. For the nation, he delivered the message that in competition, talent and ability matter more than race. This is a lesson that we are still learning today. The young men who took Western Texas College to a 28 win and one loss championship season braved racism and hostile crowds to carry their team and their college to victory. I invite you to see this 1966 team photo in front of Memorial Gym, courtesy of the University of Texas, El Paso. These champions were Bobby Joe Hill, Austin Artis, Togo Rayleigh, Willie Worsley, David Palacio, Dick Myers, Harry Flournoy, Louis Bowdoin, Neville Shedd, Jerry Armstrong, Willie Cager, and David Latin. It is fitting that on this 40th anniversary of the 1966 Miners breaking the color barrier in the NCAA championship game, that we reflect on how far we have come and how far we have yet to go. College enrollments are at an all-time high, and yet black, Hispanic, and low-income students are not enrolling and graduating at the rates we need for our nation to put its best players on the floor. Texas Western College is now the University of Texas El Paso. And as an institution, it continues to lead the charge in developing our best talent without regard to race, ethnicity, or family income. The University of Texas El Paso is one of our nation's leading Hispanic-serving institutions. 72% of its students are Hispanic. It is third in the nation in producing Hispanic undergraduates and is also rated the top engineering school for Hispanics. Since 1988, it has been led by a Latina, Dr. Diana Natalicio, a top administrator and a trailblazer by anyone's measure. The University of Texas, El Paso, in the spirit of the 1966 championship minors, continues to break barriers and continues to refuse to let race, ethnicity, or family income trump talent and hard work. I hope that all my colleagues will join me in celebrating this milestone in college athletics and racial equality. Please join me in saluting the minors on the 40th anniversary on their NCAA basketball championship, and I urge you to vote for this legislation. With that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Florida. M Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker. Yes, sir. Hello. Mr. Speaker, it is my pleasure now to yield time to my friend and colleague from El Paso, Texas, 
the Honorable Silvestre Reyes, the author of this legislation, and I yield to him five minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank uh, my colleague uh, from Texas and also the gentleman from, from Florida for uh, allowing us the time to speak here on this very important uh, uh, event for not just El Paso and not just for Texas, but for uh, our whole country, for a whole generation of players and those that have benefited from their accomplishments. I rise today in strong support, Mr. Speaker, of HRS 668, a resolution that celebrates the 40th anniversary of Texas Western's 1966 NCAA Basketball Championship. And in that, recognizing the groundbreaking impact of that title game victory on diversity in sports. And of course, on the impact, of, as my colleagues have stated, of civil rights in America. I am proud to have introduced this bill and honored to have the opportunity to speak in this chamber today about the importance of what a basketball team and a coach achieved 40 years ago. This afternoon, I want to thank uh, Leader Boehner and Chairman McKeon and Ranking Member Miller for their support in bringing this very important legislation to the floor. On March 19, 1966, the Miners of Texas Western, which is now UTEP, led by Coach Don Haskins, defeated the University of Kentucky at Cole Field House in College Park, Maryland. This significant uh, championship game uh, gave the NCAA Basketball Championship at a crucial time to Texas Western uh, College. At a time when bitter politics of racism dictated to many coaches around the country who got to play, Coach Haskins started five black players in the NCAA Basketball Championship game. The first time in America that uh, this country had seen an all-black starting lineup in a major championship contest. In 1966, as a strengthening civil rights movement met poisonous political dispute and violence, the miners were able to clearly demonstrate to a nation and to the sports world the virtue of desegregation and equality. As the athletic establishment abided by the, that unwritten rule that said, play two on the road, three if you're really behind, referring, of course, to black players. Coach Haskins, looked past the color of the player's skin and concentrated on winning games and eventually the national championship. Years later, Coach Haskins would say, and I quote, I just played my best guys like any coach would do. That simple, principled courage changed the course of American athletics and provided an important advance in the struggle of civil rights in our nation. The Texas Western Championship was an event defined by many as the Brown versus Board of Education of Athletics. Like many whose lives were constrained by their appearance and background, I found extraordinary significance in that 1966 game. Because I was at Texas Western, I was a Texas Western student during the fall semester of 1965 and had an opportunity to uh, see these great players uh, play. Shortly thereafter, I was drafted into the Army and eventually went on to fight in Vietnam. In March of 1966, I was still in El Paso, only stationed at Fort Bliss doing basic training. For those of us who were in the military at the time, the, the hypocrisy of America's racial policies were very clear. We saw a country that would not hesitate to send black and Hispanic soldiers to fight and die in foreign wars, but would not fight for us back at home. Coach Haskins and the Miners' victory helped reveal to a nation the absurdity of racism and the futility of segregation. I returned from Vietnam and chose a career in public service and a career in which my successes followed from my abilities and my own hard work. Of course, I found that life does not abide by that perfect rule of a game like basketball. But I remain inspired today by Texas Western's win and I know that I would not have had the opportunities I did have had it not been for the courage of people like Don Haskins and his minors. Today, a university, a city, and a country are improved by the achievement of that 1966 team. Soon after that championship, Texas Western became the University of Texas at El Paso, or as we call it now, UTEP. 
and its basketball program continued to, try to thrive under Coach Haskins until his retirement, as my colleagues have said, in 1999. Coach Haskins eventually led UTEP to 32 winning seasons, seven Western Athletic Conference championships, four Western Athletic uh, Conference tournament titles, and 21 postseason appearances. Last year, the Miners won 27 games, 16 at our own Don Haskins Center in El Paso, named after our great coach. And they also earned a spot in the NCAA tournament. This year, they are again near the top of their conference. Could I ask for an initial two minutes? Uh, yes, I will yield uh, the gentleman another minute. No objection. This year, they are near the top of their conference, and once again, a testament to the enduring tradition of college basketball successes created by Don Haskins. The university itself has been transformed from a small mining school into a hub of athletic excellence and world-class research. El Paso, long proud of its miners and their NCAA championship, has enjoyed the attention of a nation uh, this year as millions of Americans have fallen in love with the miners through the recently released film, Glory Road which is currently being shown around the country. It is especially important for us to honor the 1966 Miners today on the eve of their accomplishment, here shown in that championship game against Kentucky. We must revise a historical injustice, the injustice of a group of men being judged by who they were, not how they played. At the time, the the university uh, or the Texas Western Miners were denied an opportunity to appear on the Ed Sullivan Show. But just last week, I want to commend President Bush and First Lady Laura Bush as they honored this team at the White House, shown here in this photograph with our president, the, uh, the original uh, members of that 66 championship teams. So this afternoon, I want to congratulate uh, Coach Don Haskins, Bobby Joe Hill, uh, Orston Artis, Togo Riley, Willie Worsley, David Palacio, Dick Myers, Harry Flournoy. An additional 30 seconds to get... I yield an additional 20 seconds. That objection. Harry Flournoy, uh, Louis Baudin, Neville Shedd, Jerry Armstrong, Willie Cager, and David Big Daddy Latin on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of their NCAA championship for all of their successes in their lives. Today, we also remember, of course, Bobby Joe Hill, who died and was unable uh, to be in this photograph here uh, in 2002. So, Mr. Speaker, I strongly urge my colleagues to support HRS 668. Gentleman, sign and with that, I, be, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Florida. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I uh, wish to know how much time is left. The gentleman from Texas still controls nine minutes and 10 seconds. Nine? Nine minutes, yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to recognize and yield four minutes to the distinguished Congressman Danny Davis from Illinois. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I ask uh, unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. I want to thank the gentleman from Texas for yielding, and I want to extend serious, serious commendations to Representative Reyes for his introduction of this resolution, for his keen insight into opportunity to note progress in our country. Forty years ago, on March 19, 1966, the Texas Western basketball team, the Miners, defeated the University of Kentucky at Cole Fieldhouse in College Park, Maryland, to win the NWCA basketball championship. This victory marched the, the first time that an all-black starting lineup appeared in a major championship athletic contest. Often regarded as the Brown versus Board of Education of sports, the Miners' victory over the heavily favored Wildcats ushered college basketball specifically and sports more generally into the civil rights movement. Prior to this event, athletics remained largely insulated from the civil rights swell. This bill recognizes the historic accomplishments of Coach Don Haskins and the 12 players from the 1966 team. These players deserve recognition today, and two of the gentlemen are close neighbors to my congressional district, Arston Artis and Harry Florino, both from Gary, Indiana. These men finished the basketball season with an impressive 28-1 record, 
Ultimately, Coach Haskins led the Miners to 33 winning seasons and 21 postseason appearances. This resolution recognizes the incredible effect that the 1966 NAACA Basketball Championship of Texas Western, now the University of Texas at El Paso, had on promoting diversity in sports and accelerating racial integration in college sports. I am pleased to support this resolution and urge its passage and yield back the balance of my time. Chairman Yale Stiller from Florida. Mr. Speaker, I have no further uh, speakers. I will continue to reserve the balance of my time at this point. Gentleman from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I also wish to recognize another good friend and colleague from the great state of Texas, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee from Houston. Gentleman was recognized. Let me thank uh, my dear friend from Texas, Congressman Hinojosa, and of course, allow me to add uh, my um, very, very, very sincere congratulations and appreciations to uh, my friend and representative from El Paso, uh, the Honorable Sylvester Reyes. For those of you who are trying to get your eyes and your ears focused on this debate, let me just remind you of a celebrated movie by the name of Glory. Today we have the opportunity to celebrate the real deal, the real thing. And that team was known as Texas Western, now known as University of Texas at El Paso. Just think of 40 years ago, 1966, or two years after the 1964 Civil Rights Act, <clears throat> one year after the 1965 Voting Rights Act, and two years, three years after the tragedy of the four little girls in Birmingham. This was a tumultuous time in America's history. And so the idea of a coach, albeit the right idea, to place on a court of a basketball championship game five black boys, young men, to be able to play against the favored team, the University of Kentucky, was in itself a shocking shocking, shocking occurrence. But yet Don Haskins, courageous or just a wise leader, decided to put his best foot forward. And out of that came the 1966 Texas Western team. And might I congratulate all of the players, Bobby Joe Hill, Austin, Austin Artis, Togo Riley, William Willie Worsley, uh, David Palacio, Dick Myers, Harry Floyd, Louis Baudouin, Neville Shedd, Jerry Armstrong, Willie Cager, and right from the great city of Houston, now the fourth largest city in the nation, David Big Daddy Latin. We are delighted to be able to join my colleagues from Texas to say that we are proud of that measure of civil rights history. We salute certainly the wisdom of Don Haskins and remind America that sports and the playing fields, whether they be courts or tennis courts, whether they be the NFL playing field, or whether they be the baseball field or the soccer field, we know that sports generates character and integrity, but it also develops teamsmanship. And so the idea of the youngsters of America today playing on the playing fields of athletic America hopefully will create the new civil rights movement. And as a city that just experienced the all-star game, I can tell you that the whole game of basketball certainly represents diversity as we have Yar Ming and many of those who have come from foreign lands, but it also is an opportunity for young men and women to work together. I want to congratulate the manager of this bill, Congressman Hinojosa, congratulate Congressman Reyes uh, for their wisdom uh, in saluting these young men and I'm delighted to have been an original co-sponsor. I yield back. Gentleman from Florida. Mr. Speaker, I continue to reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I have no more speakers. And <clears throat> with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, Great I also Florida. yield back the balance of my time. All time having yielded back. The question is, the House, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 668 
as amended. So as many as in favor say aye. Mr. Speaker, on that I demand the yeas and nays. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds of those present having voted in the affirmative. Gentleman, gentleman from Florida. Ask for yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor taking this vote by yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. Sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8, Rule 20, and the Chair's prior announcement, further proceeding on this question will be postponed.